the envelope. Thank you, sir. How much do DAX matter? Thought it said ducks. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's tricky. How much do DAX matter? A hell of a lot. Depends, there are no depends on though, everything, yeah. though, right? Because yeah. if you have a low-end rig, if you're listening to really crummy headphones, mm -hmm. everything else is terrible. The deck pretty much doesn't really matter. You're not really going to notice. It's not an appreciable difference. But if you have really high-end gear, huge difference. Yeah, it is definitely. It's about scale for sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people come to the conclusion that DACs don't make a big difference because it's digital, ones and zeros and all that, like USB cables don't make a difference. And yeah, a lot of times they probably don't. But in some situations, they can make a world of difference. It really depends on everything. It's the entire system, the entire chain, cumulatively. How many things at home you got that have DACs in it? Think about it, right? Mm -hmm. The receiver. A bunch. Everything's got a DAC. Yeah, yeah. A bunch. You probably got a MyTech or two laying around. Yeah. The Sony uh, prot player, the uh, server. Yeah, right. Yeah. Jesus. And they all sound different. They but all sound different. It, it, it all depends on, uh, you know, everything else, though. I mean, it hits a point where a DAC is like the final key to the puzzle to, you know, yeah. to get the, the last bit of, you know, resolution. You can definitely it's use it to fine tune, too. Yeah. But it's probably the last thing. I mean, I remember uh, doing trade shows. I mean, one of the things that, uh, like, Back in the day, we had CD players, not necessarily DACs, but same deal, right? And mm -hmm. you'd, you'd have a, you'd set up a system, and I'll, you're usually it was in a hotel somewhere doing a stereophile show or whatever, Rocky Mountain, and, you know, with speakers. And uh, not headphones, but same deal. And, uh, you know, you'd go and we'd set this thing up. We'd let it play for a few hours, let it warm up, go have a beer, come back, just see what the hell it really sounds like position the speakers kind of like the same thing you do with headphones yeah get used to it let it warm up and then say okay and then play like a piano track or something oh something something will annoy you either that'll be too soft and the first thing we'd attack would be the player or the DAC the source and it just seemed to be the place to go where we could either we could either tame the source or or heighten it enlighten it depending on which way we wanted to go and usually it was like I said it was tricky things like piano or something and you know again you're usually assembling a system that wasn't necessarily completely assembled in the past, so you're always going to run into obstacles. So we would we would tune the source. So I mean, but those were higher res, very high res two channel systems. Right. With lower end stuff, it's not as critical, but it can be. I mean, you could have a low cost pair of headphones, and completely screw them up with the wrong source. From my perspective, uh, the headphones team typically seem to be the most important thing, and the further away you move from that. It seems to make less of a difference, but the challenge can be if you have really high resolution headphones or a really high resolution chain, there's always one thing in the chain that could totally screw up everything else. And so if you have really good headphones and you put it on a really good amp, the DAC makes a world of difference. Sure. But if you don't have one of those other two things super high end, it may not make an, a huge or appreciable impact. You may be able to change a DAC and not really notice a difference. Yeah, which is why a lot of people say, you know, oh, DACs don't matter. Or, right. Or anything in the chain don't matter. It's it's really it's a couple things. It's usually boils down to experience level. But well, that makes it really challenging to come up with a definitive answer on that one, because it depends on everything you're running. Of course, the DAC can make a huge difference, or sometimes it doesn't really matter that much. Well, in our end of things, it's night and day. Well, yeah. Well, if you already have everything else in place, so that's the thing. Right. Like high-end amp and well, headphones. Particularly the headphones. Yeah. Because now you're hearing everything. So yeah. everything upstream before that matters. The other thing to consider is uh, I see a lot of people talking about the type of chipsets used or the topology of the DAC, so to speak. You know, like the, uh, the Lemon Audio stuff we got is an R2R ladder, and uh, it's a different way to, to go about doing things. But And it uh, seems like people make, what would you call it, you know, assumptions based on the chipsets. And, I mean, mm -hmm. I guess sometimes rightly so, because typically lower-end chipsets are going to be combined with lower-end amplifier sections. They're and, implemented and in lower familiar end DACs yeah. and So, okay, they're going to take crap for that because, you know, oh, yeah, this chipset sucks. But really, you could, you know, how the chipset's implemented within the analog stage after the amplification is huge. Um, you know, you could, you could steer that in, in either direction. And uh, the better companies using... They, you know, look at the look at what the internal topology on something like, uh, you know, the Sabra DAC or you know, the, or the MyTech, uh, the Manhattan too, right? Yeah. I mean, what's inside that thing? You look inside, like, 
What's the first thing you notice, right? A lot of resistors. No, <laughs> on the no, side. I mean the power supply. Like oh, power supply. Huge yeah. transformers, you know, or good size power supply. Yeah. You know, regulated supplies. I mean, all these things are expensive, add weight to the thing, but more importantly, I mean, you're dealing with, they over, they over uh, spec the supplies and usually regulate the crap out of it, filter the crap out of it. And, you know, all of a sudden that cheap chip, you know, or whatever that might cost a couple bucks as a deck, starting to sound a little smoother, all right? And you take that and you, you throw some really good, well-designed uh, amp stages after that, some, you know, line level amp stages. And yeah. I mean, the thing could sound pretty damn good. Well, I guess the same goes for headphones, because there could be multiple pairs of headphones using the same driver and they sound different sure. with different mods. It's the same kind of thing. Kind of. That's like, acoustics. Yeah, but I mean, you know, but similar kind of near situation. Near enough, I guess. Because yeah. like, everybody would like, oh, well, it has this driver in it, so you already know what it's going to sound like. That's but true. not necessarily. It's a similar assumption. Yeah. It's a simple, si similar mindset yeah. where you're going to assume that because um, it's the same implementation that it should sound the same, and it not necessarily you can, you can pretty much make – you know, the guys that really know what they're doing, some of the really good designers in electronics, they can tailor the, each gain stage to sound any way they want. There's not a lot of people that are really, really good at it in the world, but, you know, I think most of the higher-end designers understand that. Well, they know what they're looking for. Sure, they know what they're after, yeah. and they go, they go at it systematically. It's, okay, so we start with a DAC chip, chipset, or whatever the front-end topology of that is that's decoding digital and analog, right? And we work down the stage until we, you know, whatever, you might need a couple gain stages after that. Probably not much, probably just a buffer stage or something, maybe two stages or so. If you're doing balance, then it's a little more complicated, balanced outs, which most of them have. But, you know, of course, with balanced out on DAX, there, that's probably another thing we could cover. So let's get back to the original point. How much do DAX really matter in the entire chain? Right, you have typically a headphone, headphone amplifier, and a DAC. That's the typical source chain. You drive the DAC from a computer or some sort of digital source. And so in that context, I think typically the DAC is the least significant thing for most people most of the time. Would you agree with that? Versus what? Versus What's, the amplifier and the headphones. Yeah, well, the, like headphone, if, the headphones are primary. Right. If you had a budget then. and you really wanted some particular gear or you were looking for the best way to allocate resources, What's the most important? I'd say probably the headphone. Yeah, you've got to get the driver, the transducer right first, and then otherwise you're just going around in circles if you're trying to compensate but for But the it. tricky thing is, especially if you're running a planar magnetic, the amplifier can be very important. Yeah, they like low right? output impedance. And so now that's important too. Yeah. So now you have the headphone number one typically in a close second oftentimes. They like power. Amplifier. They, tend to be, they tend to like the, well, power and low output impedance tend to go hand in hand. Usually you need more beefier outputs stages on an amp in order to get more power there for it's helpful it. yeah so that's why you see a lot of guys that uh, run like the 1266 they're running you know like speaker four amps. five six watts <laughs> yeah. ten watts yeah. they're trying speaker amps yeah, yeah because they have the they have a lot more damping uh, to control the, uh, the driver particularly in the low frequencies but that being said though the DAC I, a lot of low-end DACs don't do bass well like I think that's the primary thing that's lacking they actually tend yeah to, they tend to sound bright because Shockingly. they're lacking the, the foundation or the bottom end, right? Well, yeah. I mean, at any of the lower end ones we tried, that you tried at home, you know? Yeah. Right? They're, they're just, they sound lifeless. They're, they're, yeah. There's no balls to well, them. Flat, line. you know? Yeah. So technically, they all matter then, though. That's what it comes down technically. to. Technically. Mean, it just depends how high end everything is. You need to balance everything, essentially. Pretty much, you know? yeah. Everything in the same class. It's always a good like, idea yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah. When you think well, about I think it. that's your best value. Yeah. But that's a little tricky, too, because what are you looking for necessarily? What's your ultimate goal? If you're looking to never upgrade, balance makes sense. But the challenge is then if you all have mid-range gear, have to upgrade everything. then everything needs an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think there's a, a little bit of a balancing act there that might be advantageous for some folk. Maybe you could push towards higher end one piece of gear over the other. Well, people tend to be on a budget, and I know a lot of, question, a lot of times the question I'll get oh, from sure. a customer is, you know, if I, if I get these headphones, like, where do I, where do I start from there? Like, do yeah. I... You know, do I do I con concentrate? They want to know where they can con need to concentrate their funds first, and then later on worry about right. what they have to worry. What's second and third? Yeah. And and really, the it unfortunately it depends is the answer. It's challenging because right. it depends on how much the budget. It, you know, because I mean, if you if you only, if your budget is you get you can afford the headphone, but you only got a, a five hundred dollars left to spend on electronics. Yeah. yeah. You're pretty screwed. 
Well, yeah, you got to get an integrated solution. Yeah. Yeah. Get an all-in-one all deal yeah. thing. Yeah, right. Maybe. You could get decent results out of that. It's not bad. Yeah. But at this Plenty level, of stuff for a few at this bucks, level, it's, it, you're going to be up there, you know, in terms of uh, getting, if really, I mean, to get a, a reasonable sounding DAC, you're, it's usually going above two grand. Same with the amps at this level, you know. And that's, it's not a yeah. total, it's not, it's not totally the case. I mean, you know, you get away with a $300, you know, IFI X can, I think we brought up before. And, um. It'll get it, you by. It does a lot. It yeah. runs on battery. It's, it's got a DAC. It's got a DAC. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay. You could plug in a There's plenty of examples like that. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, there are there are some there are some simple ways to get started, if you if the headphones all you can afford, but uh, to answer the question, yeah, which one was more important? I'd say honestly, in my opinion, they're both, because <laughs> because the the damp the thing is is that the in a headphone system it's so it's such a basic system. You yeah. really only have an amp and a DAC. Sometimes they're all one and the same, right? There isn't a lot there, you know. If either one of those are either one of those components are off, there's right. no preamp in between to buffer it. You don't have, you know, a couple meters of cable between all these pieces, and it's a very simplistic system. So, you know, there's not a lot there. The one or the other could skew each other. So it's kind of a, it is a balancing act, so to speak, because there's really only two electronic devices and. In, so yeah, I'd yeah. say I hear what you're saying though. For most people, they would, I I would say start with the amp because without the amp, the headphones are just never going to be right. It doesn't matter right. what the DAC's yeah. doing. I mean, what about you? I mean, you got plenty of crap at home to play with. Well, what would you pr what would you recommend? I would say it kind of depends. If you're looking to like upgrade, you wouldn't want an all-in-one solution like an IFI or something because then yeah. you got to replace both your amp and DAC at the same time. Right. So, you know, get a separate amp and DAC, and then you could kind of. Replace one or the other as you yeah, or maybe try could things. afford it. Yeah, well, I think they'll wrap up this episode of Top of the Line. Feel free to leave a comment, and we might answer in a future episode. Uh, we'd love it if you subscribe. Stick around for more content like this. Thanks for watching, guys. Well, it's tricky because I think it really depends on what you care about. Because as it turns out, different people really focus on different things, and so the weakest link to one person may not necessarily be the weakest link to another. Sure. You can't really go by price point per se, so that's a challenge there too. Yes, it has a lot to do with your tastes and what you're expecting out of the music too, because not everybody's looking for a flat neutral response, and not all gear offers are either. So sometimes you can have gems in there that just work well.